giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right, welcome back to Infimidation. Tonight we'll be recapping all of the Week 2 action. Looking forward to, um, we'll say, interesting slate of events Week 3. Uh, discussing our FIM Top 10 as voted on by you and most likely disagreeing with what you voted and what each other have to say about it. For first updates now, I'm PJ. I'm Mike. And I'm Freddie. All right, we've got our final new host of the season to meet tonight. Uh, so, Freddie, how about you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Freddie Thompson. I spent... Three years on Team 4961 Shock and Awesome out of Elmont. So I'm an alumni of that team. I am an elect engineering technology management major here at Saginaw Valley State University. And I'm uh, really excited to be on the show. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to jump right in and talk about the first event we're recapping this week. Uh, Mike, what do you have for us from Milford? Milford was full of excitement. Qualification highlights included a completed rocket by 5460 and a four RP match by 67 and 308. Not looking good for your bet, Nick. Sorry. Only two rockets completed in Milford. Um, so 67, the hot team, seated first and selected their neighbors, 3707, the Brighton Techno Dogs, uh, and 5562, Laker Logistics from Maple City, forming what the audience dubbed as the Soggy Hot Dogs. Uh, yep. In retrospect, I think it should have been called the Hot Dog Water Alliance, but whatever. <laughs> they went undefeated through quarters and semis and uh, met the number three alliance of 3536, the Electro Eagles out of Heartland. 5460, Strike Zone from Lapeer, and 6610, Robot Recall from Burton. In the first match, 3707 had some issues with their sword module. Uh, both 67 and 5460 struggled to score under defense. Um, but the number three alliance came out on top in that first match. Round two, things were very, very evenly matched. Uh, it all came down to 3536 clinching their climb, but they, uh, they would have had a one-point victory if they got it, but they broke the bolts in their arm and couldn't get it up. Without um, without 35-36, the number three alliance couldn't couldn't keep up, and they uh, they drowned in the hot dog water. Which is not a good thing to drown in, people. <laughs> of course not. Uh, chairmans went to 66 Grizzly from Ypsilanti, and uh, EI went to Heartland 35-36. Um, it's their first ever EI, and they got a and their first ever cling bling. So good for those guys. Uh, rookie All Star went to 75-98 SCA uh, Constellations from Wixom. But, Freddie, I want to hear about the crazy alliance selection stuff at Kettering. Well, Mike, based on everything else that happened at Kettering 2, the alliance selection seems nothing out of the ordinary. In fact, this event was so wild, I've got to do something wild in order to, pre to present it properly. That's much better. But from burning pizza to scorched earth to successful ramp bots, Kettering truly proved to be a must-watch event in the great state of Michigan. 78 insane qualification matches brought us to what may may very well be the craziest alliance selection of the season. As a result of their solid level 3 HAB climb, and with a rank score of 2.75, 52-24 Panther Power out of Standish sat atop the rankings of the number 1 seed, looking at a formidable list of teams to create a strong number 1 alliance. However, these teams had other plans, and 52-24 was declined by the number 2, 3, and 4 seeded teams before enlisting the help of Team 35-34 House of Cards out of Davison, and 5660, Symmetrical Chaos, to round out their alliance. After that, the mic turned to the representative of 3667, Mechanum Knights, out of Port Huron, who requested the assistance of Team 217, Thunder Chickens, out of Sterling Heights, but they declined the invita invitation in order to form their own alliance as well. 3667 then chose 494 Martians from Goodrich, and 6093, Unplugged from Sandusky, to form the second alliance. Based on how the event had gone with the fire alarm and the scorched earth, it seemed as though few were surprised when March Madness got an early start and saw the number 8 alliance of 6033 Gadget Agents from Mount Pleasant, 4961 Shock and Awesome out of Elmont, 
And highest rookie seed 7660, the Biting Irish out of Ann Arbor, upset the number one alliance in two matches. However, the slip are no longer fit after that, and the eighth alliance was beat out by the number four alliance. Our finals pit the number two alliance previously mentioned, and the fourth alliance made up of 1684 Chimeras out of Lapeer, 5048 Spartronics out of Emily City, and 5282 Railroaders out of Durand. Now to the matches. With 3667 being a cargo specialist, 494 focusing their talents on the rocket, and 6093 laying down unforgiving defense, it seemed the second alliance was just too powerful for a sim similarly powered fourth alliance, and we saw said number two alliance take home the gold in two matches. We had a silver gold cling bling go to team 1684 Chimeras for being finalists and winning chairmans, their first chairman's award, win. And we had the Engineering Inspiration Award go to 2619 The Charge out of Midland. And our rookie all-star was awarded to team 7670 The Biting Irish. So good job to those teams for bringing home the bacon. I would like to congratulate all teams that competed. And I would like to thank Kettering University for once again putting on an amazing event. Now I'm going to send it over to PJ, who's going to tell us a thing or two about the Belleville District. All right. I just want to say, I'm just uh, to say, throw one more congratulations, 1684 The Chimeras. Great group of people. They've been working for this chairman's win for a long time, and I was so happy to see them finally get it. Um, so extra congrats to uh, the chimichangas up there. Very well deserved. Yes. So uh, for Belleville, um, relatively low-key event. Uh, we had our finals between the Alliance 2 and Alliance 5. Uh, Alliance 2 consisted of 5567 Code Red Robotics from uh, Mylan, 3656 the Dreadbots out of Dexter, and 7656 the MC Hammers out of Michigan Center. Uh, that alliance did end up winning over the finalists of Alliance 5. 6861 the Tyros team out of Livonia, 1076 Pi High Samurai from Ann Arbor, and 6101 Strange Quarks also from Ann Arbor. Um, that number five alliance actually ended up getting to the... Um, finals by beating out the number one alliance in semis uh when i was looking into that asking some people uh 50 50s elevator reportedly broke and uh they were unable to recover uh, and fix it in time and just uh unfortunately you know that's where it goes and uh chairman's went to team 2137 torque out of oxford uh ei went to team 50 50 cowtown robotics out of carlton that's their first ever ei as well uh, so rookie all star went to 7656 to MC Hammers out of Michigan Center. So you know that's uh, rookie all star was a cling bling. They'd have it. Uh, and then looking into this, this is actually 6861 and 1076. Is they're the first medals at all of any kind in team history? Um, I mean 6861 is a second year team. So, but 1076 has been around for uh, for a while now, and this is the first medal they've managed to get. So uh, congratulations! Want to shout out to the uh, Pi High Samurai, one of my favored team names in FRC. Uh, then we're going to hop out over to the Lakeview District. Uh, this one, once again, fairly standard bracket. We had 2054 seed first, and actually what I was surprised by was they did not pick uh, 1918 with their first overall pick, the NC Gears. 2054 and 1918 have a history of working together, um, winning together, They've won multiple district events together in the past, and they passed over them for 5205, uh, the Full Metal Jackets from Concord, round out their alliance to 7144, Next Tech Hydra from Okomos. Uh, 5205, uh, most people, if they don't recognize the number or the team name, uh, they were the, uh, the Yeet Bot from last year. Anybody who remembers them, they were the little tiny robot. They had arms. They would grab the cube and literally fling it up onto the scale. One of my favorite robots from last year. Uh, this is their first event win ever. Uh, finalist alliance was Alliance 2, 6002 Zubotics captained it, uh, along with 5676 The Heroes and 6556 Waldron Botheads. Um, alliance 1 would take it, uh, I believe, going undefeated through elimination. Sorry about that. And then uh, Chairman's would go to 503 Frog Force, winning their first Chairman's Award since 2016, uh, which is a big deal because a lot of people thought that they were... Um, some people were beginning to think they were washed up, for lack of a better word, in the chairman's department. And see them finally get another district chairman's award. This actually moves them up to first place all time in numbers of chairman's award wins, breaking their tie uh, with Team 1311, uh, Cal Robotics, who just went Hall of Fame last year. Um, so it's nice if so. It's nice to see them uh, sort of regain that chairman's power that they've had in Michigan for quite a long time. 
Engineering Inspiration went to 830, the Rat Pack out of Ann Arbor. Rookie All-Star went to Team 7811, the STP Tigers out of Battle Creek. So now we're going to throw it on over to Freddie to talk about St. Joe. All right. Despite me not being able to tune in, St. Joe was definitely an exciting event as it normally is. Uh, beating out the finalist alliance was the number two alliance of 4325 Robo Ranger, Robo Rangers from Cassopolis. 5929 Globetrotters out of Zealand and 288 Robo Dogs out of Granville. They beat the fourth alliance of 3688 Norsemen from Sutton's Bay, 4003 Trisonics out of Allendale, 5530 and 5535 Bionic Bison from New Buffalo. Our Chairman's Award went to Team 2337 Engineers from Grand Blank, and our EI went to 4003 Trisonics out of Allendale. And last but not least, our rookie all-star went to 7809 Valhalla Nation out of Bangor. The number one alliance lost out in the semis due to an alliance member, 2337 Engineers, having some drivetrain issues. The rest of the playoffs also saw some mechanical issues throughout the way. 4003 had some issues in the finals. Yeah, I'm going to we'll pause you right there for a second. Because if you, like, so that is, you know, that's 2767 back-to-back world champions getting knocked out in semis. If you would have, I think anybody would have seen them, uh, if anybody would have seen the alliances, saw 2767 and 2337 on the first uh, alliance together, I don't think any anybody thought they were losing that event after that happened. Certainly, certainly. So the rocket rank point actually wasn't that wasn't really a thing at all, except for a couple matches. So again, Nick, not looking good for your bet. Match 35 saw 2767 and 2335 unable to place the last bit of cargo on level three of the rocket due to simultaneous elevator malfunctions. It's very rare that you see something like that. Uh, terrible luck for them. And 2767 is a new entry into hashtag Team Suction, and they use a suction cup to get onto level 3. And they have a suction cup game piece manipulator. So very cool for them. Team Suction. They really suck. Team Suction. They suck, Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move into our countdown of the top 10 teams in Michigan from last week's competition as voted on by you, the fun community, in the FRC Top 25 polls. While we will save where any of these teams finished in the overall Top 25, we'll discuss the top 10 vote-getters in FIM. Uh, so I'm going to throw up a slide with that. Our top 10 teams, we've got 67, followed by 27, 67, 37, 07, 302, 1684, 54, 60, 217, uh, 2054, 3536, and 3667. Um, I may have saved the slide in the wrong spot. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so I guess, so, uh, what are everyone's thoughts about this list that I just rattled off very, very quickly? I mean, I, I think we're a little high. I don't, I don't think we're better than the Techno Dogs or, or Strike Force. I think Strike Force had a little bad luck. Um, our peak game piece was at nine this weekend, and, 3707 and 5460 both hit 12. So we got some work to do. Um, we had a level three climb that they don't, but they'll get there. <laughs> I got to agree with Mike there. Uh, I think I, I don't see how you can keep a two time defending world champ. I don't really see how you can keep him outside the number one spot. Uh, I didn't, like I said, I didn't really get a lot of opportunity to see uh, the hot team. But I think, uh, I think 217 uh, may be a little high. From what I saw at Kettering, they didn't really... Uh, I don't think they manage hatch panels at all. I think they're mostly just a cargo bot. And it doesn't look like they can hold on to cargo. No, they, yeah. and they were they were having a lot of problems grabbing the cargo. Their speed is questionable as well. Like, their arm yes, seems to definitely. be a uh, little questionable. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I think they're going up to Finger Lakes next week. Uh, and then one on here that I want to shout out, because we didn't talk about them in any of our recaps, was uh, number four. We have 302 The Dragons out of Lake Orion. Um, they did not play in Michigan this week. They actually went down to Miami Valley in uh, Ohio where they managed to seed first and win the event. So this is actually their second year in a row winning that event down there. So um, huge congratulations to 302 going out of state and making us proud. I'm sure uh, Ohio loves us. I'm saying show in Ohio who's boss. Uh, <laughs> love to see it. You love to see it. Yeah. But uh, so uh, congratulations to them. 
another one that I saw who did well that I thought might merit some consideration in the top 10, uh, Mike can probably speak to this a little bit better, was 308. Uh, I was Definitely. I was surprised with what I saw out of them because uh, I was pleasantly surprised with what I saw out of them. Um, so I think that they, especially over number 10, who I was not super, like, yes, uh, Mechanum Knights, or as they will always be in my heart, their original name, the Poho Robos. Uh, while they won their event, I wasn't super impressed with their play, whereas I think 308 got snubbed by not making it super far in eliminations at their event. 308 was a really, really good hash placer. Yeah. Uh, play, doing the rocket with them was easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you guys, 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 guys are going to go far at Troy. Yeah. So you guys got a rocket RP with 308, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it, we finished early and we, we got to go do our hang too. So. Yeah. All right. So um, so that's our top 10. You'll have to tune in tomorrow to see where all, where uh, any of these teams placed in the top 25 uh, overall. So we're going to move into our previews for next week. Five more exciting events. Some very interesting events. Uh, first off, we're going to have Centerline. Uh, 33 is the obvious top robot coming into this event, coming off their number one seed and win at Southfield. Uh, they have yet to use that triple climb in an actual match, uh, but with the depth at Centerline, I think we might get to see it. Uh, they're looking for a, their Chairman's Award win as well after not getting that one at Southfield. Uh, 1025 Impy is coming off a number one ranking at Belleville where they were knocked out in the semifinals uh, due to the mechanical issues of 50 50, uh, as mentioned before. So they're, they're hungry for a better finish at this one. Rounding out sort of the top three robots that at this event uh, is 3539, the Biting Bulldogs. They've not revealed yet, uh, but they're definitely uh, been a powerhouse in Michigan for a long time. Uh, my other robots kind of in the mix at this event are include 51, 469, 910, 1189, 1701, and 4779. Uh, so that's kind of what I think is that's centerline. It's a very deep event, which is not usual for centerline. Um, but the uh, centerline has the traditional centerline experience has moved a little bit, as I believe Mike is going to talk about. Yeah, Detroit is the new centerline. Uh, anyone who's been to centerline and heard PJ talk about it last year because it was his favorite event. Um, it's Always Detroit good. now. <laughs> uh, and uh, after a finals finish at Gibraltar, I fully expect uh, the Flying Toasters to win this. Um, I'm putting a lot of pressure on them, and I, I think they'll get the sweet cling bling uh, with the chairmans too, but we'll see. No pressure, guys. Um, <laughs> other notables for, for Robot and, and for Culture Awards are 226 and 4680. 4680 was a finalist at, uh, at Southfield, and 226, this is their premiere, um, but they got a, they got a cool-looking robot. So... Um, other than that, I don't, I don't, we'll, we'll see who else is there. Um, yeah. PJ, you got Kingsford? Yeah, Kingsford, our first uh, event up in the Upper Peninsula this year. Uh, we start off with our top robot at the event. It's going to be 245, the Anambots, coming in off a finalist appearance at Kettering One, looking for a win and looking for a chairman's award. I'd say they're the top contender for both. Uh, some of the two UP powerhouses, probably the top two UP teams are 4391, the Brave Bots, and 4970, Ice Cubed, both competing up there. Uh, also in the mix, we've got 857, 1596, 3602, and 6075. Just all of our, a lot of our northern Michigan powerhouses that we don't talk about a lot. Um, also competing at Kingsford are two of the best names in all of FRC, which belong in teams 5702 and 5706, respectively Robota Watami and the Tequamanon Phenomenon. So I will talk about those robots as much as humanly possible forever because they're my favorites. And then um, also at Kingsford, for anybody who's going to be up there, our uh, fearless leader, Tyler, uh, is going to be up there game announcing and emceeing. Uh, so if you're up at Kingsford, make sure you say hi to Tyler. Yeah, it's right on the border for Wisconsin, so not too far of a drive for me. Figure I'd come up to the UP and uh, maybe do a few match up there talking about it this year. Hey, what do you guys think? <laughs> I say you do the entire event. The entire that might be a little taxing. So how about one match we'll do in the Uper <laughs> accent? Uh, but yeah, coming up there, uh, some I got some fantastic people. We're going to be training up there. I uh, can't wait to make it a great event. So uh, you know, you know, drive you know the ten hours it is for all you on the mainland to come up to the event and check it out, or you can come from Wisconsin where it's about like a you know two hour drive. That's the crazy thing to it is like yeah, you can come from different states is way closer than anywhere down here. <laughs> right. So now, uh, Freddie, take us through Gold Lake. Well, first of all, I want to say add one more vote for uh, Tyler to do the whole event in a Uper accent. <laughs> I'd love to hear him try. I don't think he'd be able to do the whole event, but I, I would love to hear Everything him try. for the right amount of bits, Freddie. Everything for the right <laughs> amount of bits. <laughs> all right. 
All right, so Gull Lake certainly seems to be an interesting one, with 19 of the 40 teams competing for their second time, hoping to get up to the estimated threshold for district points to punch a ticket to MSC. The favorites going in look to be defending Detroit World Finalists 3357 Comets out of Grand Rapids and 4130 Blue Devils out of Richmond. In terms of chairmans, look for 68 Trucktown Thunder from Ortonville to be back in the thick of it despite their five-year chairman streak being broken last year. And look for 3357 for chairmans as well as they won it at Lansing last season. And uh, now it looks like I'm going to talk about Muskegon. So previewing the Muskegon event. It's got a relatively young field of teams. It's a new event as well on the uh, west coast of the state. Only five of 40 teams have competed so far this season, so we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, new looks, new strategies, new robots. It's going to be fun. 4,004, 1711, 3546, 4967, 5114 all seem to be pretty promising contenders for this event. And the chairman's race could get ugly, as seven teams have won chairmans in the previous three seasons. Uh, I'd say the front runners would be 3618 Petoskey Paladin, Paladins and 4967 that one team. Yeah, I definitely agree with those. But yeah, it's interesting to see a uh, uh, chairman slugfest like that. We haven't had one in a while. Uh, so that's going to be our time for tonight. Uh, we're going to have to stop it there and wrap the show up. Uh, thank you to everyone who's watched, sent us questions and comments, and supported the show. Uh, if you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. Uh, if you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. Speaking of which, push- the uh, 400 bits will get you one extra match, LJP. So thank you for that. Uh, we'll do one extra match in the Uper accent just for you. Yeah, so that's that's Tyler's price. <laughs> Take notes, chat. Take notes. <laughs> so, Donate those bits. So be sure to click that little green follow button above. Click the purple sub button to see if you maybe have a free Twitch Prime sub available. Um, on behalf of myself, Freddie, Mike, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is going to be Mouth of the South. Uh, we'll be here same time next place next Monday. Um, for the recaps of Detroit, Centerline, Gold Lake, Muskegon, and Kingsford, and looking forward to week four. And then uh, to end our show, uh, we'd like to take a moment um, on a more serious note to remember a member of the FIM family who we lost this week, uh, Ken Platishore, longtime volunteer and lead robot inspector, uh, Woody Flowers finalist, award-winning mentor of 74 and 107, and bastion of first support on the west side of the state, uh, passed away this past week. Uh, Ken was a rock star in FIM, for lack of a better word, he was he was the guy on the west side of the state. He was helping with Grand Valley. He helped start a ton of teams out there. Um, so he's going to truly be missed. So we just wanted to take a second to say that uh, we are going to miss Ken. Okay. So um, thank you all for watching again, and we will see you here same time, same place next week. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.